Will you? Well, I will. The two most powerful words in the English language are I will. Because what comes after I will will shape your life. What you speak after I will, what you believe after the words I will, will control your decisions and shape your life totally. If you believe you will succeed, you will succeed. If you believe you are capable of achieving great things, you will achieve those great things. You will attempt those great things in the first place. If you speak into your life resilience and determination to overcome anything, you will be ready to face and overcome anything. Friends, let the power of I will shape your life in the most powerful way. What you speak after I will is important. What you believe after the words I will will control your decisions and shape your life. Friends, if you believe you are strong, if you believe you are capable of achieving great things, you will attempt those great things in life. I will love. I will be strong. I will be successful. I will be an achiever. I will be abundant. I will be rich. I will be determined. I will be focused. I will be disciplined. I will be healthy. I will be wealthy. I will be beautiful. I will be wise. I will be capable of anything. I will be someone who makes things happen. I will be filled with faith. I will be blessed. I will be grateful to God. I will believe in God. I will thank God for making me a miracle. I will be connected. I will be with God 24-7. I will be more than my body. I will be empathetic towards others. I will be ready for others. I will be focused with others. I will be excited. I will be a fighter. I will be more than enough. I will be a winner. And friends, I will be a champion. Friends, you can't just speak the words. You must feel the words. And then you must believe those words, I will. Repeat them every single day. Let them soak into your subconscious. Dream about the words, I will, because what follows them, let the power become one with you. Are you ready to be great? I will. Replace I want with I will. What comes after I will is the most important thing you could say. Instead of saying I want to be rich, just say I will be rich. Say it, feel it, feel it until you believe it. I will love. I will be strong. I will be successful. I will be abundant. I will be rich. I will be determined. I will be focused. I will be disciplined. I will be capable of anything. I will be strong. I will be a strong person. I will be limitless. Thoughts are powerful, my friends. Thoughts lead to actions, my friends. Actions over time become habits. And habits lead to long-lasting results. If you speak negativity into your life, negativity will show up in your life. I will be me. And I want you to be you. Now stay tuned and join for today's message. Take care. Good morning. My name is Ralph Riggs. I'm an author, an addiction recovery coach, a life coach, and the host of this show to Take Your Life Back Today radio show. You can see a video version of this if you go to YouTube under channel Take Your Life Back Today show. God's cure for alcoholism. God's cure for alcoholism. At one time, I would have said there is no cure, but that was before I met Jesus. After years of repeated, repeated drunkenness and remorse, I came to Jesus for deliverance. Jesus truly set me free and gave me a purpose for living. I mean, I had hope finally. Well, God's word states clearly that drunk nerds shall not inherit the kingdom of God. It also records that many were delivered from drunkenness and debauchery. And such were some of you, but ye are washed but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by spirit of our God. They had experienced cure through alcoholism. Many desperately addicted alcoholics have experienced complete deliverance through the work of God's Holy Spirit in their hearts. Because the cure is available through God. Before one can experience God's cure, one must admit total helplessness 
in spite of repeated failure. Alcoholics commonly think somehow, somewhere, sometime they'd be able to drink in a controlled way or quit when they want. The cure God offers goes far beyond merely controlling the craving for alcohol and or drugs. God's cure arrests the root problem of sin, of the sinful heart. By faith in Jesus Christ, a person can die to sin and become a new person with a new outlet, uh, outlook and new appetites and new reason for living. Jesus, he came to save his people from their sins. He himself lived above every sin and overcame every temptation. Although he was innocent, he died that we might be delivered from the power of sin. After he rose from the grave, he went up to God in heaven. Now, he has sent his own spirit to work in the hearts and defeated souls, offering them deliverance. Jesus conquered Satan, and he is ready to uh, rescue you from the enemy of your soul. Are you willing to let Jesus free you from Satan's slavery this morning? I mean, the method involved is so simple. Are you willing to face your condition honestly? Is alcoholism or drug addiction really your biggest problem? Or is it yourself? When God sees that you desperately want to be saved, not just from alcoholism, but from your sinful desires, he will rescue you. He always answers those who admit their wretchedness and honestly cry, God, be merciful to me as a sinner. God offers to deliver those who repent of their rebellion against them. Against him, I should say. But repentance is costly. It means surrendering your stubborn will to God and giving up every right to control your own life. When God's Spirit makes you sorry for your sins with a godly sorrow and uh, you sincerely desire to live an entirely different life, God can begin to work. He says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of Holy Ghost. What a promise, isn't it? What a gift. Think about that. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, in Acts 16.31. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, in John 14, 6. Do not depend on yourself, my friends. Put all your trust in Jesus Christ. Drink freely of the living water he offers you in John 14, and he will quench the thirst of your soul. Open your heart to Jesus Christ this morning and receive him into your life. With Christ living in you by, this, by his spirit, you will be able to uh, say with Apostle Paul, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me in Philippians 4.13. Folks, confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Tell others the Savior has delivered you. Let them know he is now directing your steps in the new life of freedom. Your testimony will soon separate you from Christ mockers who keep dragging you down. It starts today, my friend. Separate yourself from all degrading influences. Tell your old friends you are going to serve the Lord. Invite them to join you and then give up their companionship forever if they are not interested. Stay away from all the places where strong drink is served. Don't even look at the old stuff. The wisest man who ever lived said, Look not thou upon the wine when it is red. At the last it is biteth like a serpent. Proverbs twenty three, thirty one through thirty two, where wherefore uh, come out from uh, among them and be separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Second Corinthians six seventeen through 18. Start today. Unite in an intimate, active fellowship with the most spiritual, faithful congregation of Christians you can find. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and they continued steadfastly in the apostle doctrine and fellowship in and in breaking of the bread and 
in prayers, Acts 2, 4, 41, 42. So God's cure for loneliness and uselessness, which is often drive a person to drink, join the holy, happy company of genuine Christians and associate with them as much as possible. Help them and be humble enough to let them help you through the power of Christ. Delight yourself in the Lord and his word. Ask God to replace your desire for alcohol and or drugs with a hunger and thirst for his truth. Trust the Holy Spirit to you, help to help you understand the Bible and promptly obey whatever he asks you to do. Let God be part of your life. Starting today, make special efforts to help other drunkards and addicted people. You know how you were delivered. As they observe you resisting temptation, they will know there is hope for them also. Do everything you can to warn young and old people alike of the dangers of drinking and drugging. Give your testimony, call your attention to the teaching of God's word. Awake ye drunkards and weep and howl all ye drinkers of wine in Joel 1 5. For the drunkard and the gluten shall come to poverty in Proverbs 23, 21. Who hath woe, who hath sorrow, who hath contentions, who hath babbling, who hath wounds without cause, who hath redness of the eyes. They that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine, Proverbs 23, 29 through 30. Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. And whoever is deceived thereby is not wise proverbs 20 20 uh, in one god's cure is available to all is fully guaranteed jesus himself promised if the son therefore shall make you free he shall be free indeed in john eight thirty six. call me at eight four 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 zero five. help together my friends you and i can help take each other's lives back be good to yourselves and always be good to each other remember a simple smile to a total stranger will change that stranger's life can possibly help you in your own life John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. How many of us fathers and grandfathers would give up our son for that purpose? May God bless you and take good care. Bye-bye now. Take care.